This is one of the areas where Catholic ethics is different from contemporary secular ethics. Contemporary secular ethics gives people an unlimited choice to refuse treatment and it also encourages people to make quality of life judgments. So it encourages people to refuse treatment if they think that their quality of life after treatment would be unacceptable to them. On the other hand, the Catholic ethics suggests that we should only refuse treatment if it is either futile or too burdensome. And uh, it also encourages us not to make quality of life judgments within that. Uh, Catholic ethics believes that it is always good to be alive, that life is always a good, and therefore that we should not make those decisions. Um, Catholic ethics therefore would uh, suggests that someone should not refuse tube feeding, that they should continue to be tube fed and that they should continue to live. Another way of asking the same question is what's wrong with someone killing themselves? And uh, whether it's a depressed adolescent or a middle-aged man who's paralysed, we believe that it is always wrong to kill ourselves. In this case I feel the issue quite personally because uh, Christian Rossiter is just about the same age I am. And I hope that I will have many more years to, to enjoy this life and I think it's very sad that someone my own age is making choices that will mean that their life will end prematurely. Treatment can be burdensome in all sorts of ways. Uh, treatment can be burdensome if it is physically too painful. Um, some forms of treatment for uh, chemotherapy for cancer might fall into this category. Treatment can also be burdensome if it is psychologically too distressing for the patient or socially too isolating or in some cases financially too expensive. Treatment can also be dis uh, burdensome if the patient finds it either morally or spiritually repugnant. So treatment can be burdensome in all sorts of ways and if treatment is burdensome uh, the church recognises that the patient can choose not to have that burdensome treatment. Tube feeding is really not burdensome. Um, my own father was tube fed for the last four years of his life. He had treatment for throat cancer and was unable to swallow. And I know from preparing meals for him that it's a, a reasonably simple and not very burdensome process. Um, really it is much more like normal feeding than it is like medical treatment. To mix up his meal and then to pour it down his tube is uh, much more like me preparing my food than it is like me having medical treatment. As well as that, it is not an unduly burdensome process. In some ways it's probably less complicated than preparing a normal meal. So someone who refuses this is not refusing burdensome treatment. They are instead refusing an ordinary means of staying alive. The secular approach to ethics uh, encourages people to make quality of life judgments, to determine whether or not they'll have treatment on the grounds of whether they think that the quality of life they'll enjoy after treatment will be acceptable to them. Um, the danger with this is it's impossible to really know ahead of time whether life will be worth living or not. The Catholic trad tradition on the other hand says that we should not make those quality of life judgments. We look at the treatment and we decide whether the treatment is futile or burdensome. But we do not look at life and work out whether life is worth living or not. Life is always a good. Life is always worth living. There are two things that are dangerous about making quality of life judgments. First of all is when we make them ourselves. Um, after my dad had his cancer treatment, he told me that if he'd known ahead of time what his life would be like after that treatment, he, he may not have chosen to have had the treatment. But having had the treatment and uh, discovering what life was like 
even with tube feeding and even with being frail. What he learnt was that life was still sweet, that life was still worth living, and therefore he was glad that he had the treatment. So the first danger is when we make these decisions ourselves. Second and more serious danger is when we're incapacitated and when someone else is making that decision for us. If they're young and fit and strong, they might decide that they could not endure life with some level of disability, and therefore they might refuse treatment for us which we would choose, because we would know that life, even with some level of disability, is still worth living. I've wondered about this as I've thought about this case. And to be honest, I really do not know how I would cope. I was reading recently a letter by an English man named Simon Fitzgerald. And Simon is someone who is paralysed. Um, he spoke about, as a 22-year-old, discovering that the rest of his life would be full of pain and suffering. He spoke about the anguish he experienced when the doctors told him that he would be paralysed from the chest down for the rest of his life. But then he wrote, After 25 years of paralysis, I have learnt, despite the anguish, sweat and tears, that it is still possible to find a valuable meaning in one's life. And while I do not know, I hope that I would have the faith and courage that Simon Fitzgerald had to choose to continue to live and to learn that even with disability or frailness or paralysis that life itself is still a good and that life is still worth living.